This is KGW News at Noon. Good afternoon, I'm Drew Carney, and new here at noon, Oregon Senator Ron Wyden has tested positive for COVID. He's the latest Oregon lawmaker to test positive in recent weeks, along with representatives Earl Blumenauer and Peter DeFazio. Wyden's office says he tested positive this morning during routine testing, and his symptoms are mild. The senator is fully vaccinated and is working remotely right now in Washington, D.C. Vice President Kamala Harris also tested positive for COVID today. The White House says she doesn't have any symptoms and she has also not been in close contact with President Biden or First Lady Jill Biden. The Vice President is vaccinated and has also had two booster shots. Harris's husband tested positive for COVID last month. Closer to home here, the Oregon Health Authority has come out with an electronic vaccine card system. So you can submit all your information through an online form and the health authority will send you a QR code or electronic copy of your card. The website to get this done is myelectronicvaccinecard.oregon.gov. All right, let's take a quick break here to check in on the Weather Center with Mr. Rodney Hill. Rod, what do you have for us here this afternoon? Uh, hi, everybody. I think most of us have seen at least a passing shower on the radar. You see there's actually quite a bit of activity activity moving through and the biggest baddest of them all is this one up here in Clark County. There's the center uh, getting on the back edge of what's been some heavy rain. There may be some small hail in these orange embedded areas. So this is just now moving into battleground, especially just north. It's going to split the difference into Amboy. No lightning being detected at noon. I have not seen any reports of any high gusty winds, primarily just some showers with spotty downpours and again maybe some small hail here are the clouds over the rose city we're at 52 degrees it was 55 i think 54 so we've been rain cooled a little bit and then i want to show you this camera you see it's wet uh, at the uh, on the sidewalk there this is the mount hood oregon resort up in walsh is at 1500 feet but it's clearly showing some nice sun breaks too it's that mix of sun breaks and cloud cover this afternoon that will continue to fuel the possibility these showers turn heavy from time to time could get as warm as 57. The shower chances start to dwindle down quickly, I think, once we get into mid-evening and the sun angle gets low. But there's more rain ahead on my seven-day forecast, and it is looking like we have a good chance to crack the top five of wettest Aprils by the time we get to midnight tonight. Drew, back to you. All right, more from Rod coming up here in a few minutes, but right now we do want to get back to some of our local headlines this afternoon. For one, we're still working to learn more about a standoff in northwest Portland that lasted for four hours before it finally came to an end early this morning. It all started at about 9 o'clock last night when police say a man broke into a second floor apartment on northwest NATO Parkway right near the Broadway Bridge. Police say that man had knives and a hammer and started destroying the apartment, breaking windows and appliances even threw some things out of a window. The people living there did manage to get out safely. Officers evacuated three apartments altogether and called in a special response team to help out. Negotiators eventually took that man into custody at about 1 a.m. without anyone getting hurt. Meanwhile, a Woodburn police officer is recovering this afternoon after he was hurt during a shooting near Aurora, where a suspect wanted for weapons charges wound up getting killed. This happened yesterday afternoon at the Flying J truck stop. Police say Micaiah Clinton from Portland barricaded himself in a van in the truck stop parking lot. The SWAT team used tear gas to get him out of the van, and that's when shots were fired. A Marion County Sheriff's deputy is on administrative leave this afternoon. We reached out to the sheriff's office to find out if he's one of the people who fired a gun, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. Investigators also haven't said whether the suspect fired any shots or if more than one deputy fired their gun. We can share pieces of the police radio call that came in during the shooting. Shot fired, shot fired. There are three minutes to the scene, there are multiple minutes to the scene. Two, one, 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 one. Minutes are on scene, suspect is down. One officer involved down. The officer who was hit is 31 year old Jesse Ponce with Woodburn Police. He has serious injuries, but again, he is recovering this afternoon and is expected to be OK. Oregon State Police have taken over the investigation. This week's effort to clear homeless campers from the area surrounding Laurel Horse Park in southeast Portland got off to a slow start yesterday, but crews are scheduled to continue that effort here today. The city posted eviction notices last Friday, letting campers there know 
They had to leave by Monday and we were there yesterday right around noon as rapid response BioClean pulled up. That's the company that the city hired to handle the cleanup. The crew told us they were supposed to clear garbage and hazardous waste, including needles. They picked up some trash, but they left less than 30 minutes after they showed up, telling us they needed police on hand to oversee that sweep. The Oregon primary is three weeks away. Three weeks from today, as a matter of fact, on May 17th. Today, though, is the last day you can either register to vote or update your voter registration. And all of that can be taken care of on the Secretary of State's website. Also, Oregon has what's known as a closed primary, so only the candidates in the party you're registered with will show up on your ballot. Ballots start going out tomorrow. Absentee or replacement ballots will be mailed out by May 12th. And in order for your vote to count, you need to drop off your ballot at a drop box or make sure it's postmarked no later than 8 o'clock on May 17th. Tent camping off the streets. Last week, KGW hosted a Democratic gubernatorial debate with leading candidates Tina Kotek and Tobias Reed. You can watch right now that debate on our YouTube channel and stay tuned because the Republican debate is coming up here on May the 3rd. The Portland Police Union is formally calling for change on Portland City Council. It's now endorsing Renee Gonzalez, who's running against incumbent commissioner Joanne Hardesty. In a debate earlier this month, Gonzalez called for adequate funding for the P uh, Portland Police Bureau. It is important to note Commissioner Hardesty and the police union have a contentious relationship. Just last December, she sued the union after she was falsely accused in a hit and run case. The lawsuit alleges the former president of the police union leaked information that falsely identified Hardesty as a suspect. In another local story here this afternoon, the JV baseball team at Camas High School is under investigation, accused of using racist words and racist actions during a game last week against Skyview High School. We want to warn you that some of the information in the story may be considered offensive. As Catherine Cook reports, Skyview's coach is now criticizing how some at Camas are handling the situation. Skyview's JV baseball game was rained out Monday, but the varsity team still played. Parents we spoke with say they're just as invested in what's happening and hoping to use it as a teaching moment. A moment of solidarity between Battleground and Skyview High School's varsity baseball teams. Their support Monday night was for Skyview's JV team in response to their game against Camus last Wednesday. The Camus JV baseball team is under investigation for allegedly making racist comments and noises during that game. For now, all JV baseball games are suspended. An excerpt from the letter read, Harassment, intimidation, and bullying, including racial slurs, are not tolerated in our school community. We will work to make sure that we get to the bottom of this, including assigning discipline as appropriate. Our goal is to make sure that learning happens for our students and that repair and restoration are made to those harmed. It starts at the home. It's unacceptable. Rory Spanier's son plays varsity baseball for Skyview. His team was to face Camus last Thursday, the day after the alleged incidents. You know, we were trying to make heads and tails of it. They finally canceled the game and, you know, we were prepared. We, we printed up some, we made up some signs. We were ready to bring some anti-racism signs to the, to the game and stand in solidarity with our players. On Monday, Skyview baseball coach Seth Johnson posted a statement on Twitter calling it his personal view about what he believes is right. He said in part, over the past few days with my interactions with Camus, at times I have not felt comfortable with where the investigation was heading. They have taken a stance that numerous words overheard by some Skyview players only rhymed with the N-word, and the ape sounds coming from their dugout throughout the game were instead seal noises. Johnson also said, with their words and actions, the players involved lacked situational awareness and empathy regarding a black player on his team and black people in general. Spanier couldn't agree more. I hope whomever was responsible is held accountable, and I hope that the investigation that is ongoing is taken very seriously because this is the second time at that high school in this calendar year that something along these lines has happened. In December, the Benson High School girls basketball coach accused the Camus student section of yelling racial slurs at his players during a game in Camus. An outside investigation by Vancouver Public Schools determined it was likely that inappropriate language was used, but couldn't confirm if racial slurs were used or which students were involved.
For now, the investigation into the Camus JV baseball team continues, as does baseball for everyone else. In Vancouver, Catherine Cook, KGW News. Our next stop here this afternoon is the Oregon coast because we have incredible images to share of a dramatic long line rescue that happened on Saturday. This involved two teenagers, a brother and a sister. Witnesses were only able to watch as the 15 year old brother and the 13 year old sister became stranded on the beach there. The tide was starting to come in that afternoon. So this happened at Whale Cove right between Depot Bay and Newport. The teenager's mom, who wasn't there with them at the time, says they were out exploring the rocks when the daughter, her daughter, slipped in and fell into the water. Luckily, her big brother was right there to help. And my son actually pulled her out of the water and saved her. So I'm so proud of him. And um, then when they came down to rescue them, he again offered that she get rescued first. And I'm just, we you know, I'm such a proud mom for that. <laughs> And so incredible work there by the brother and then firefighters and the Coast Guard were able to bring both the brother and the sister to safety. They suffered a few scratches, a few bruises, but other than being very cold, mom tells us they're going to be okay.